and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use a Lamifier in iOS in Swift in order to make HTTP GET requests. And in this case, we're going to be using the HTTP bin example REST API in order to basically send a very simple HTTP GET request through a Lamifier to HTTP bin and then we're going to grab some information from HTTP bin such as the headers of the request as well as the IP address and much more. And plus what we're going to do is we're going to take that information from JSON format, parse it using NSJSON serialization, and then we are going to display it to the user by printing it out to the console in Xcode. Now there isn't much to explain here, but what I'd like to say uh, is thank you to Veba for sending in the question uh, for this video. And of course, I really hope, do hope that this was able to answer your question. Uh, and of course, he actually asked how you can use a Lamo fire in Swift and iOS in order to make asynchronous uh, HTTP requests. There will be other parts coming out soon about post, uh, delete, update requests, and more, uh, but for now, let's go ahead and start with the simplest of the requests, the GET request. Alright, so now let's go over to the coding part, where I'm going to show you exactly how you can actually code in this simple iOS application. Let's get to it. Alright, so welcome back to the coding part, and now I'm going to show you how exactly you can actually implement this Alamofire application. Now, if I go back to Xcode over here, as you can see, I've got this little Xcode window set up as well as this short code. Now, if I go to my iOS simulator, which is actually running this code, and if I click on the screen once and go back to Xcode, as you can see, Xcode has printed out three different objects. The first object is the raw JSON value received from HTTP bin. The second one is the IP address origin from HTTP bin. And of course, the third one is the URL of the request that we sent to HTTP bin. Alright, so now let me explain what's actually going on behind the scenes in the code. Now what's happening here is first of all in touches began whenever you click on the view the make request function is called and inside of make request I then call something called the request function. The request function is a part of the Alamo fire framework. I pass it the URL that I'd like to call and by default this is a get request and that's why I'm calling slash get on HTTP bin.org. I then look for a JSON response. Once a Lambda fire gathers this JSON response or a response in general, then we store the response in a variable called response, and then we call this callback handler. And basically what this means is that this function or this block of code will be called right as a response is gained from this request. Now remember something about this. Which is that, let's just say I were to make a long running request, where let's just say I have to upload a file to this get request or to this get, you know, HTTP server. And if I were to say print hello, this is message two, and inside of the block of code, I were to say hello, this is message one, then what would happen is message two would print first and then message one. This is because when you call request, this isn't called immediately. Request is called, and now Lamifier has started to make the request to the HTTP server. Then what happens is it goes ahead and runs this code, while in the background it's actually still making the HTTP request. Once the HTTP request is over, then this line of code, or whatever the main code is, is stopped, and this code is then run. And then it continues from there. And so what happens is number two will be printed, and then number one will be printed. This might not happen right now because the HTTP bin.org request is practically instant, but sometimes it may happen depending on the internet speed. Now, this is going to run onto my iPhone simulator, and if I just click on the screen here, oh, as you can see, it did happen. Luckily, my internet speed wasn't fast enough, and it said, hello, this is message two. It then printed everything out that I wanted it to, and then it said, hello, this is message one. All right, so that is how you can implement that. But just one more thing I'd like to show you here is how we are actually parsing our JSON. Now the point here when parsing the JSON uh, is actually that the fact that Lamofire already uses NSJSON serialization in the back end to parse the JSON for us and then returns the JSON as an any object, not an any object, but an any, uh, an any type. Uh, and so what we do is, I mean, this can be optional because Lamofire may not have received JSON uh, from the request uh, or from the HTTP server. And so what I do is I run an if let on it and I say if the value of the result 
to the response, uh, he, he, he's not nil, then put that in JSON, uh, and then create a new variable called JSON object, uh, and set this um, to the JSON as a string any object dictionary. Uh, the, we then have constants origin and URL. Uh, and inside of origin, uh, we are setting origin to the origin object from the JSON object, and we're converting this to a string. As you can see, that's what that is in our JSON right there. Uh, and then, of course, we're converting the URL object to a string as well. And then once we've got those, we are then able to have these print messages that will actually print out all of that data. And that is how you can use a Lamifier in Swift 3 in order to actually parse JSON responses from HTTP servers. And that was the tutorial today. I really do hope you enjoyed and I hope this was able to solve your question, Vaybov. All right, so thank you for sending in your question, of course, and I really do hope you were able to learn from this. And of course, if you did, please make sure to leave a like down below as it really does help out a lot and of course if you'd like to share this video with anybody else you know or anybody else you think this might help like your friends or family please do make sure to do that as well uh, but of course though if you have any more questions suggestions or feedback leave them down in the comment section below you can email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimani and all the contact information will be down in the description below in case you didn't get that all right so thank you very much for watching today but one last thing though if you'd like to be notified wherever I release new content please do make sure to subscribe to the channel as it really does help out a lot uh, and of course to turn on notifications by clicking the little bell icon beside the subscribe button to be notified by, via google notification and email whenever i release a new video all right so thank you very much for watching today goodbye